So this video has been on my list for a long time, the command line revoke cert video. And since my channel's coming up on its one year anniversary and my first series of videos on my channel related to PKI or public key infrastructure or Active Directory certificate services, I thought I would go ahead and make another certificate video, command line revoke certificate. So make sure to check out my previous PKI videos. There's a lot of good information in there and many of those videos are quite popular on my channel. Anyway, I was able to dust off these old scripts from a year ago and put up a new enterprise root CA with OCSP and publish the certificate revocation list and all of that all on one server. So we're up and running. So here you see the scenario laid out. The domain is aaco.local. We've got a domain controller and we've got Tucson ICA1. It's the root issuing CA hosting the CRL, AIA, and OCSP. So that's our PKI lab for this scenario. So you can see we have a good healthy environment here in PKI view. Everything's marked okay. We've created a user cert and a computer cert for auto enroll. And we also have the OCSP certificate. And you can see we've been enrolling certificates. We even have certificates in, issued to individual users and workstations. And that's all courtesy of group policy that says, hey, if you're permitted to go get a cert, go get a cert. And we have that setting in computer and user at the default domain policy. And those certs are issued based on the fact that we've set the permissions on the certificate template. Those permissions basically say domain computers, read, enroll, and auto enroll. Okay, you want to make sure your subject name is correct. It should be something that's available. If you select the subject name that's not available, then the certificate won't issue. Again, domain users, read, enroll, auto enroll. Here I'm using common name and user principal name because I don't have email in the environment. So there is no email address. If you attempted to issue that certificate, then it wouldn't work because there's no email address. So here you can see aaco.user on Win10A workstation. Each of the certificates are issued for the user and the computer. So in a small environment, it's easy enough to manage certificates in the certificate authority interface. Here I'm just uh, putting a certificate on hold. You can basically temporarily revoke a certificate and then you can unrevoke that certificate if you put it on hold. Any other revocation reason will permanently revoke the certificate. Here I'm showing you can filter the view. I'm going to filter on requester name. I want to see any certificates that have been issued to AACO user. What I find in practice though, in a large environment with hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of certificates issued for years, this interface gets bogged down rapidly and even filtering can take quite a long time to be effective. And that's why I would like to find a command line solution that would make it easy to review the certificates that are issued to an individual user and then revoke them. Because if somebody leaves the company, you don't want them using the VPN to come into the network or a certificate's been compromised for a card key and somebody could open the building. Certificates underpin a great deal of security issues. So you can see here, we can use the cert util command in DOS, but it just echoes back a bunch of serial numbers and it's gonna be really hard to pipe those serial numbers into a cert util revoke command. So I go to look at PowerShell. Yeah, the same thing. I basically have to cast those into variables and then parse through them. I'm looking for something a little simpler and we're going to find that even any of the native PowerShell modules for certificate services have nothing to deal with individual certificates like finding an individual certificate or revoking an individual certificate. 
This PowerShell PKI module, PSPKI, this is the module you need. It has the commands that will let you see individual certificates and revoke them. It's got a whole bunch of other commands here as well that look like they'll come quite handy if you find yourself administering a massive PKI environment and have to deal with it continually. I'm going to go ahead and install the module from GitHub, so that's what you see happening here. And of course, git command module PSPKI shows you all of the commands that we've just added. So we're back on Tucson ICA1, that issuing certificate authority. It's the enterprise root CA. And we're gonna play around with a couple of the PSPKI commands here. We're gonna use the git certificate authority. Basically, this is gonna set the context for the next query. So we're going to get issued request property certificate template. Let's see what that looks like. This is basically gonna get us a list of every certificate that's been issued. Now, obviously, if I had a bunch of certificates, I wouldn't want to do that. But you can see I've issued 11 certificates. A, a co user got one. Let's see where the workstation certificate is. That's up here. It's number five, win 10. So, again, remember that uh, a machine, when it places a request, is going to be using its SAM account name too. And the machine is all, machine SAM account name is always the machine name plus a dollar sign. So we can see win 10 a dollar sign received the uh, AACO computer certificate here. The certificate template gives you this long numeric string, whereas certificate template OID includes the certificate name and the certificate template OID. So I've gone ahead and changed these in the script to show us the OID instead of just the certificate template because looking at a string of numbers without the display name of the certificate is rather pointless. So we're going to want to see that. So now I'm going to just go ahead. This is going to show us all of the unique types of certificates that have been issued. And when we run that, we see Basically, we've published three types of certificates and all three of those types of certificates have been issued. Now I want to look specifically for certificates that have been issued to Win 10A. Let's go ahead and clear the slate here. So we're going to get the certificate authority that sets the context of which PK environment are we talking to. Then we're going to get issued request. So this is a certificate that was issued in response to a request and the filter is the request requester name equals a, -A co win 10 a dollar sign and we're going to return the certificate template oid and there we see this serial number reflects the certificate that was issued to win 10 a dollar sign let's do the same thing for our user here a, -A co user Oh, and he's actually been issued two certificates so far. There we go. So if we wanted to revoke a, a co user certificates, we'd need to revoke both of these certificates, 007 and 00B. So let's go ahead and crack out the revoke certificate command and see how that works. So I took a crack at uh, this revoke certificate command you see right here, I start out with uh, get help, revoke certificate, and it returns rather simple syntax here. Revoke certificate dash request bracket object. So I'm a bit at a loss from the context here as to what an object is because I don't see any property that refers to an object. And the only unique things I see are the request ID the row ID, the serial number, those would be the only unique things in here. Everything else would be ubiquitous in the directory. So I tried just running it off the top of my head. I figured request ID and row ID were 11. So, oh, let's see. Eh, parameter on request, the. Then I tried piping in the serial number. You see that here. So I tried piping in the request ID or row ID 11 and it didn't like it. It says database ADCS DB row. So it's looking for a row but it didn't find it in row 11. I just threw it serial number for kicks. 
So here you see you can pipe. We knew we wanted to revoke the uh, certificate for AA Co user. So I just piped the AA Co user query. I just piped it to revoke certificate here. And you see it returns the result and it successfully revoked certificate with ID equals seven and ID equals 11 with the reason unspecified. Yes, I could have included the reason parameter and included one of the appropriate responses for the reason. I'm sure there's a lot of that on the website. I'll leave a link for the website down below. So here you can confirm I run the same command again and I don't get any response. So we did revoke all of those certificates for a, a co user. So I played around with this revoke certificate a little bit and obviously we found that we can pipe the output of get issued request to revoke certificate here and that works. And then you can also create a cert or a collection of cert by creating a variable that represents the output of get issued request and you can run revoke certificate against that. I couldn't come up with the way with the time that I had to create the ADCSDB row type of variable where I could just say 11 is an ADCSDB row type and put that against revoke certificate. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to conclude this video. I punched together this little script. We have a function that gets a yes, no response. We get the input uh, who requested the certificate. We get a collection of certificates for that requester and we show each of the certificates one at a time and ask if they want, if you want to revoke it. So let's see how that works out. Just to show you the scenario here, basically on the client machine, I deleted the user and computer certificate and then I ran group policy. So I actually have two certificates per user and per computer. And I'm going to say that I want to delete the first certificate for each. Say the user's laptop got stolen and those are the certificates that I want to revoke. So I can certainly come on here and make that assessment in advance. But again, like I say, we're using the command line because I've got tens of thousands of certificates and I can barely keep this uh, the GUI open. So let's go ahead and we'll run the script and see how that works for us. So run. So we're going to look for a, a co user. Okay, it's showing me the first certificate. I'm going to say no because I want to see both of them. Okay, so it shows me the second one. I'm going to say no to that as well. And so now we can actually assess, okay, well, that was the first one at 623 and that's the second one at 628. So I'm going to go ahead and run it again. And I'm going to go ahead and revoke the first one. Yes, you can see it's revoked successfully and I'm going to keep the second one. There we go. And let's go ahead and run it again for the workstation. And remember to put the dollar sign because it's the same account name for a workstation. Okay, and we know the first one is the one we want to go with. So I'm going to say yes, and it shows me the second one. And we can verify that right now. 953 against 951. So yeah, that's the one we want to go with. I'm going to keep that one. Okay, so I hope you find that useful. Obviously, uh, you can take more time to write a better script, but this is a reasonably functional one. It can show me all the certificates issued to a user and a computer. Or it can show me all the certificates issued to a particular requester. And then I can decide if I want to revoke that certificate or not. Okay, so I hope this is helpful information for you. Make sure to check out the PSPKI PowerShell module. Especially the revoke certificate command. And there's a lot of other commands that are in that module so it could become quite handy if you're administering your windows active directory certificate services pki infrastructure okay well thank you very much shotoku tech please subscribe comment like and share thank you very much